Welcome back to another episode of Let's Get Unreal, where I'm recreating the island from Lost in Unreal Engine 5. It's Brant, not Brent here, and today I'm going to be building the beach and forest area. So today kind of marks a special point in the project for me where I for the first time felt like the island inside of Unreal Engine was actually starting to look like the island from the TV show. I'll show you this at the end of the video, but it kind of took my breath away a little bit to be honest. I know that I haven't been doing this for very long and this is only part five, but at the end of this video, I hope you can kind of get a little bit of what I'm describing and feeling. All right, when we last left the island, I had just finished applying and texturing the two landscapes with an auto landscape material that I customized to fit the look and feel of the island from Lost. For landscape number two, the mountains, I used an artificial turf that surprisingly gave me that deep mossy green color I wanted for all the mountains in the background. For the beach, I used a Thai wet and dry sand, and I love the way the footprints look. Before I start building the beach though, I want to take care of the crater over here. It's just been kind of bugging me since I applied the artificial turf onto the mountains, and I know it's not supposed to be this color, so let's change that. Now this crater in real life is supposed to be Diamond Head State Monument Park in Oahu, Hawaii. From what I've read, the crater was supposed to play a bigger part in the TV show, but they ended up scrapping those plans for some reason. You can still see it every now and then though in the background of some shots. If you didn't know, Diamond Head is a volcanic cone that was formed by renewed eruptions from the Kolau volcano that took place long after the volcano formed and had gone dormant. That's as far as I'm going to go into it though. If you want to read up about volcanoes in Hawaii and all that, go look it up on Wikipedia. I actually did visit there, but it was a very long time ago before Lost even aired. But as I remembered, it still was very cool. Basically, I've just been adding new surface or texture from Quixel Bridge and Megascans to the auto landscape material. I picked a lighter sand color that seemed to match the color of the crater in real life, mostly, and has some interesting pieces of rocks to it. Remember, I can always go back later and add foliage to this and change the color to better match, or even change the texture again altogether. But for now, I think this will do just fine, so at least I know it's not bugging me out there in the background of some of these shots. Next, I'm gonna begin doing some very light sculpting to bring the beach to life by randomly going over the sand areas with the sculpting tool set to a very low strength. A lot of the results don't really show up in the video from this view and angle, but it really makes it look more realistic when you're actually down on the level of the beach. You'll be able to see this better later in the video. Now I spend a good amount of time going over the lines where the dry sand meets with the mossy grass material. This specific area is going to be an embankment, which is present in most real life beaches you see. Basically, I believe it's formed because the wind and waves blow the sand back up to the beach to this point where it meets the vegetation and forms this little mini hill. You can see it in tons of the shots in the show too. I do believe the shaping of the beach like this will be an ongoing part of the project where I'm constantly adding little mounds here and there to get it to my liking. You can see from this little quick playthrough that the beach is starting to come to life with some mounds and little areas of elevated sand that really gives the beach some real personality. Next we get on to some more exciting stuff where I start the ground covering vegetation. All this is from the tropical rainforest pack by the way and I highly recommend it. This small area of vegetation serves as a little buffer between the sand and the forest area or jungle area which starts just a few feet back from this embankment. It's very clear in many of the shots in season one when they're on the beach. I do my best to kind of feather the ground cover and randomly spread it around the sand line. While this probably doesn't match the show exactly, I think it looks pretty damn good for what we're trying to do here. I guess it's around this point that I start feeling like things are really starting to kind of come together for the beach and I haven't even added a single tree yet. There's just something about vegetation that makes it pop because I think it's a really great match for the look and feel of the island. I love the freedom of just being able to go back to areas too I might have missed and touch things up a bit. So you probably noticed I stopped right before I got to the point up there and that's because for this video we're just focusing right around the beach where the flight of Crash 815 takes place. Um, I'll definitely be going out and developing the further points on the island and other videos but right now we're just sticking to the main beach for season one. So far this is okay for now for this little embankment but I think I'm probably going to want to go back later to really touch it up to make it look as perfect as I can and match it as closely as I can to the show. But for now this is good. Now comes the trees, finally! This is a pretty exciting part for me. Again, I'm using the rainforest pack. 
I intentionally excluded any of the trees with fatter trunks here though, because I didn't feel those would be appropriate for this close to the beach and would ultimately feel out of place. I'll definitely be using them though for my inner parts of the island later when I get to them. I think the height and variation is looking pretty good here for what we want, and I can always go back later and tweak things again if they don't look right. Remember, the jungle or forest area just right off the beach is pretty thick, so I think this density works well. Every once in a while, I'll give the game a play to make sure the scale of the tree line matches my vision of the island. It's around here where I feel like the density isn't really as much as I would like, so I try to fill in a lot of the more sparser areas. You can also notice that with this many trees, the level of detail, aka LOD, becomes pretty important if you want everything to load smoothly. This of course means that at distances far away, the trees aren't going to look as great as when you're up close. That's perfectly okay though. And when you're painting these, you can go right up into the mountains, and even in some cases right on them. I think the density is looking pretty good here, but I just realized I forgot some of the trees I wanted and they weren't checked. Oh no. Watch how easy it is just to go back and add them to the jungle. I think you can really start to see the shape of things to come here. Of course in the future I'll be adding paths, clearings, more grass, and other open areas in different parts of the jungle. But for now I think this is a really great starting point where I'll be able to mold the island to my liking. I now want to go back and touch up some of the parts of the vegetation line along the embankment to make sure everything looks like it's flowing well together. You can see some of the trees kind of floating around here in the background, and that's because I had them enabled as nanites, and I think that has something to do with the wind effect and it's causing all kinds of chaos in there. But once I disabled nanites, they stopped moving like that. So I'm not really sure how nanites are going to help me at this point as everything is running super smoothly without them. So I'll just leave them like it is for now and deal with it later. Okay, so that's about it for this episode. I know some of you are hoping to see more progress faster and I apologize for not being able to make that happen more quickly, but being new to this makes it more challenging for me to produce videos as quickly as I would like to. Of course, other stuff in my life gets in the way too, but with all that said, I'm really happy with the direction the island is going in and how everything is turning out so far. Like I said, today I just got this feeling where I felt like I was looking into the show. It's kind of hard to describe, so I'm gonna leave you with this last shot I put together. Thanks again everyone for watching and please like and subscribe. Next episode I'm gonna be building the plane crash and I can't wait to show you guys how awesome that's gonna be. So until next time, see you on the next episode of Let's Get Unreal.